Hi, and welcome to How to Be a Man Magnet by Looking and Feeling Your Best. I'm Matthew Coast, and today I have Kimberly Seltzer from EliteImageMakeovers.com. And Kimberly is a dating coach, an image consultant, as well as a matchmaker. So thanks for being with us today, Kimberly. Thanks for having me. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, so you used to be a therapist. Can you talk a little bit about why you became an image consultant and a dating coach? How long do we have? <laughs> I have a long story around it. Actually, I almost refer to myself these days as a retired therapist. And the reason why I say that is I had a very different life. I'm from Chicago originally. I live in LA now. And at the time, I had a thriving practice. I worked with families and couples and individuals. And, um, and we did a lot of talking. As a therapist, we do lots of talking. Talking is great. Nothing wrong with talking. But I found that when I had some things happen to me and I was ready to take action, it made me realize that there was something more that I wanted to do to help people. Um, and so my journey was, is I, I moved from Chicago to California, and I always joke, I did what the other Californians do, I got a divorce. <laughs> Obviously there are other issues going on, but um, I, I was at that pivotal moment of, oh my gosh, what do I do? I, I had a couple of kids, I had the dog, I had, my whole life was kind of shattered at that point. And, um, there was no way I was going to be a good therapist at that point. You know, I always used to joke, people would come to me and if I had to help them at that time, I'd be like, you think you have it bad? Let me go on the couch and tell you a little bit about my problems. So um, as I was going through my journey, realizing that talking wasn't enough and that um, my own transformation needed to take place, a couple things happened. So the first was, I got to make over myself and it was kind of by accident. The first thing was is back then as a mom, a newer mom, I had oversized big black clothes, nursing bras and Birkenstocks. That was like pretty much my wardrobe. And then I was at that point where, oh my gosh, so now I have to go date. <laughs> wasn't going to happen in those clothes. Uh, but honestly, I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling sexy. I wasn't even knowing how to flirt with guys. I didn't even know what to do because the last time I dated guys was, you know, back in college at frat parties. Like it, there was, I had no frame of reference what to do. So that was the first thing. And then I had to get new clothes because I started losing weight. And, you know, first it was out of stress, but then after a while it was out of, a, you know, really eating better and having a better lifestyle. I started exercising and really getting back to myself. And so when things started fitting me better, and I started actually incorporating color into my wardrobe, guess what? I started getting noticed more. And the more I got noticed, my confidence grew. So I started realizing the importance of this almost symbiotic relationship between the outer and the inner. And then me being a therapist, I was like, wow, this is kind of magical, and I want to help others with that. And then, of course, I was obsessed with that show, What Not to Wear. I don't know if anybody knows that show. But it's a makeover show, and I'm like, gosh, those people are really making some interesting changes. I wonder if they last. So I wanted to kind of combine my background as a therapist and do makeovers with people. And it's been an amazing journey, you know, um, then moving into the space of helping singles and becoming a dating coach and – um, working with some of the top people in the industry, realizing also that the infield work was crucial. No longer was it just talking about changing. I'm actually helping people take action by changing, by changing their clothes, by changing their body language, helping people how to flirt, getting kind of their mojo on, um, both men and women, by the way. But um, that's kind of how I got started. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. That's awesome. You know, and, and one of the things that I, I think is just really fascinating about that and, and, you know, from my own experience as well, I, I, I actually originally used to be a, a men's dating coach and I kind of switched over sides. And, and uh, one of the things that, that uh, I learned when I was in college is I, I went through this study. I found, I found this study. I was reading about this study where they, um, they, they put people into different types of clothing and they would send them out onto the campus and they had like these, these people planted around the campus and they would like interact with that person. 
you know, and what they ended up finding from doing a whole bunch of studies on people and wearing clothes and, and what was going on with them is that they actually found that when a person had a specific type of clothing on, they would kind of like take on this identity of a person that would wear that type of clothing. So if they had like a suit, like if a guy had a suit on, he like almost had this, this different persona about him than if he was wearing just a t-shirt and, and jeans, you know? And, and so I, I definitely, I mean, and that's just one aspect, but I, I totally agree with you. You know, there's the, the, uh, a lot of people kind of do the whole, I'm just going to do inner work. And then there's a whole lot of people that are like, I'm just going to focus on the outer things. And, and really the, the most powerful way to, to, uh, to, to really get and create whatever it is that you want in your life, whether it's better relationships, whether it's, it's uh, you know, better health or, or, you know, having more money or anything like that is to work on both sides of it. So, so I, you know, that's, that's awesome that that's what you found as well. And so, you know, I was going through your website and I was looking at some of these before and after images. And I have to say that they are absolutely remarkable. You know, there, there's some, really powerful transformations that people go through when, when, uh, uh, th just by looking at some of those pictures on there. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what a woman might experience by kind of doing, have, having a makeover, you know, changing up her clothes and, 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 uh, going through some of those services? Yeah, I love what, the, what you said, by the way, you know, when you were talking about that study, because I, I too was familiar with another study out of the New York Times that did, did something similar where these guys put on white coats and they pretended to be doctors just by their costume. And, and because of what they were wearing versus the placebo um, group, it was so interesting that they actually performed and were believed to be doctors just based on that white coat. So to your point, clothes is a huge aspect of, of who we are. And, and actually they went so far as to study the brain and do you know, the brain actually shifts and, and they coined the term enclosed cognition. It's really interesting. So um, when people say, or women come to me to do makeovers and they're like, well, one of the most common things I'll hear is, well, if a man doesn't like me for me, then F him, you know? And I, I hear that a lot, they, that women are very fearful about changing who they are. And the first thing, you know, that I deal with is, you're right, it's not just the inner, it's not just the outer, it, it's both. We're, we're kind of a package deal, and it's how you package yourself and how you market yourself. It has nothing to do with changing who you are on the inside, but packaging yourself in a way so that people get to know the real you. And, and that's really where it starts. And when I work with women who either have low body confidence or self-image, um, They've never even learned how to dress, uh, or maybe they're just wearing the wrong clothes. It, it could be anything. I love starting where the clothes are because it's an easy gateway into somebody's confidence. Um, often, too, I'll find that women think that they can't wear something. You know, they'll see it on a mannequin or they'll see it on their friends. They're like, oh, I can never be like that or I can never do that. Quite often it's because they don't know their body type and they don't know what looks good on them. And that's what I'm all about. I'm, I really help women figure out, you know, their personal style, their body type, their colors. And when it comes to dating, a great dating image that works for them, not like the cookie cutter trends that are here in LA that, you know, looks good in the magazines. It's really about you. So again, it's not, I'm never, ever trying to change people. I'm just trying to really bring out the best version of that person. Yeah, you know, that's, that's really fascinating that you say that. And, and you know, that's, that's, it's, what's funny is that that's where I kind of came from when, when I was first, before I became a men's dating coach, I, I was, I was a, a, a learner, you know, I was, a, I was, I was really pathetic with women is really what it boils down to. <laughs> I, was, I was, I was just horrible with women. And one of the things that I remember saying a lot back then was I would say things like, you know, you know, if she just get to know my personality, you know, if she just get to know who I really was, you know, and, and stop judging me for what I wear, you know, maybe she'd, you know, find out. And, and it was, uh, somebody, I talked to, I think I was at a seminar or something on, on dating and, and I was talking to this guy and, and he was telling me, he's like, well, how is she ever going to find out who you are if, 
you know, you're, you're like dumbing yourself down on the outside. You know, like if, if instead you were wearing something that made you look attractive, she, it would be a lot easier for her to get to know you because then it wouldn't be like, like, whoa, you know, what's going on with that guy? Why is he wearing those, you know, grandma jeans? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, um, so I really like that point that you said there. Um, and so if, if, if a woman wants to attract a certain type of man, is, is there something specific that she should wear in order to, to attract a, a particular type of guy? Well, Matthew, I mean, this is kind of the old adage of like attracts like. It's always amazing to me when, you know, men and women come to me and they say they want a certain type and then I tell them to look in the mirror and they're totally different than the kind of person they want to attract. Um, so that, that's the first thing is really take a, a look at, you know, who you are as a person and who you want to attract. Um, uh, it's funny because there, and I'll just say this on a standpoint from the guy that I was working with the other day. I, I do these virtual sessions, kind of like how we're talking today, but I actually do Skype makeovers, which is super fun. And he was saying he wanted an, an athletic, thin woman who was 10 years younger than him. And he was dressed very sloppy and not at all athletic and didn't exercise a day in his life. So I was like, okay, well, let's start with you <laughs> and getting you some clothes that are a little more athletic based. So the same applies for women, you know, take a look at who you're wanting to track. So that's the first thing. The second thing I say is to, again, stop worrying about like what your friend is wearing and, um, you know, women, unfortunately, we tend to dress up for each other instead of a guy. And what we women like isn't necessarily what a guy likes. And I'll talk a little bit more what guys find sexy. But um, in general, if you take a look at your body type, get educated, and I do have a gift for you at the end about that, your colors, what your personal style is, like look at your lifestyle, what you want to kind of tell about you, your 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 clothes tell a story about you. So you really have to look at what you're putting out there as your message. Um, as long as you're congruent with your message and who you are, then you're going to attract that kind of guy. Um, I just find it a, a really interesting statistic too that I want to throw out that 55% of your dating success can be increased just with what you're wearing. And, and that's not me talking. That's, that, that's research. So that's pretty powerful stuff, ladies. I mean, there's not many things in life where you can get that instant gratification, that instant change. And we're doing all this like internal work that takes time. There's nothing like putting on a pair of heels or a dress that makes you feel feminine and sexy and gorgeous. And I know not every woman out there feels that way in a dress and heels, but if you if you talk to me, if you work with me, I can put a dress and heels on almost every body type, every kind of foot, and there's alternatives to that as well. So, you know, what, one of the things that I, I just kind of want to point out about what you said there, and, and it's, it's funny because I'm, I'm, uh, right now I'm building a, a series of different programs for, uh, for a lot of the women in our community. And one of the things that, that I talk about, and uh, one, one of the ways that a lot of women come into our community is they'll come in kind of with this mindset, right, where they're like, you know, it's, it's all about the guy. You know, and, and it's like, okay, how do I get him to do this? How do I make him do that? You know, how do I, you know, force this guy to be what I want him to be? Or, you know, how do I, uh, how do I get this guy that, that, you know, that, that is everything that I want, you know, and, and they don't tend to look at what's going on with them. You know, and one of the big things that, that I was, I was actually just putting into a program. So I, I think it's just you know, fascinating that you're talking about it is kind of creating those same aspects in yourself. You know, if, if you're going to look for a guy that has his life together, you know, what kind of a woman do you think he's going to want? You know, he's, he's, he's definitely not going to want some woman that's, that's just attempting to force him into all these things. He's going to want a woman who's, who's got her life together as well. He's going to want a woman who's, you know, got all these different aspects of, of what, um, you know, of what he's, he's got going on in her as well, because a lot of this stuff, it, you know, it, it takes time, you know, it takes time to develop yourself. It takes time to, um, 
you know, kind of pull out some of those, get rid of some of those, those things that are stopping you from, from really expressing the most amazing parts of yourself. And, uh, you know, when you, when you do that, you know, you want to find other people that, that have, that have hit that, that space as well. So anyway, that, that was just kind of a tangent that I wanted to run off. That's an awesome tangent, by the way. And if I can just piggyback off of that, that what it made me think of, um, is something that I, I deal with a lot with women and you're right. Like I think, and, and men do this too. Like everybody's so focused outside themselves and getting the man, getting the girl, instead of really saying being that magnetic person that draws men to you because you're, you love you. I mean, at the end of the day, Men love women who love themselves. And that's really where it all has to begin. And so all the stuff that Matthew and I are talking about today has to do with that. One of the fun exercises I, I have women do is to wear sexy lingerie underneath those clothes. You know, it's funny, I'll go shopping with women and we'll get all these fantastic clothes and I, I'm in the dressing room with them and then I see they have these like granny underwear on or that are two sizes too big. I'm like, what you doing? And, and the response a lot of women say is, well, I don't have a boyfriend. So, I mean, why do I have to worry about it? And, and, and to the point that you just made, I say back to the women, it's not about the guy. It's about how you feel wearing that underwear. Because guess what? If you know what you got going on, that guy is going to find you attractive because it's gonna, that sexiness is going to come within you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and just kind of piggybacking off of that as well. Um, you know, there's, there's this, th there's this kind of space that you can get to, you know, and, and, and the faster you can get there, the more attractive you're going to be. And it's really this space where you don't need this guy to do right. things or be anything or, you know, get to a certain spot. And when you, when you're, when you're more focused on, you know, being that awesome person and less on, you know, how am I going to get him to do this? And how am I going to get him to do that? You know, it, it's just, it's magnetic, you know, it's powerful. All of a sudden, um, you know, that man magnet thing that we're talking about is, is, is one of those things that, that comes from that. And so, um, you know, uh, going back over to kind of the, you know, what to wear and stuff. Um, you know, you're talking about lingerie underneath, underneath like your clothes. Is, is there anything specific that a woman should wear on a date or shouldn't wear for that matter? Oh gosh, there's so much. Um, okay. So here's the thing is I, I, again, men are attracted to women who feel good about themselves. So the first rule of thumb I always tell women is take a look in your closet and what are the go-to items, go-to outfit that you usually put on your body when you have a date? Um, you Most likely you'll find components of those clothes that are working for you. There, sometimes we don't think about reasons of why we're so confident in wearing something, but if you really dissect it, it it's usually the way things fit. Maybe you got reinforced for, you know, being in it, like a guy really complimented you a lot or lots of guys did. Maybe it's the color that really works for you and, and attracts men or people in general. Um, it, it also could be the way that you your body is moving in it, you know? So I would say that's the first and foremost, something that you feel really good and confident in because that's gonna shine through. Avoid anything that you're going to feel like you're fidgeting in, you're not confident in, you're itching it. You know, we don't think about stuff like that, but I call them, you know, the, the confidence depleters <laughs> because that the guy doesn't know you yet. And his first impression, if you're like itching yourself, that he doesn't know what to make of that. So that's the first rule of thumb. The second thing is... Um, Less is more, and I don't mean by less clothes. <laughs> I want to I wanna be certain that you guys get that. It actually has to do with simplicity. Men really enjoy clothes that showcase your figure in a very flattering and classy way. Um, often, again, like women will kind of go overboard and maybe they'll dress for each other. You know, we'll wear a lot of flowery things and patterns and things that kind of cover up your beautiful figure and and guys just like something very simple they like also things that are sensual and soft to the touch cottons satins see matthew's smiling as i'm saying this you guys can't see this but i'm i'm, I'm hitting on something um that, those are things also um 
pick a part of the body that you really feel amazing about, confident in. And if you don't, you need to call me because every woman should look in the mirror and have one part of the body that they really like. So if you like your legs, then show them off. You know, wear the short skirt. Um, and then I said the final thing is, ladies, men love femininity, okay? And what that means is, and how that translates to your clothes is, you know, because I, I work with just as many men as I do women, and I'm constantly serving guys. I'm like, what do you find sexy? They all say two things, a dress or a skirt, and a pair of heels. And it, why? Because they don't wear them. <laughs> it's something that's feminine. It's different. It, it, the way you move and you walk and the way your body is, they, they love that. So if you keep kind of some of those rule of thumbs in mind for your you know, dating clothes, it'll get you far. Oh, I want to mention one other thing is really know where you're going on the date. Hopefully, I mean, unless it's a surprise on your first date, if you're going on a hiking date, you're going to wear something different than if it's a coffee date or if it's a, you know, a drink at night. So that that's important too. Yeah. And, and I just want to uh, mention a little bit about that whole feminine thing as well. And, and, and just what I've kind of noticed from my own perceptions of, of women and, and how they dress and how they act and, and whether it's feminine or not. And I get a lot of women that, that come to our community that, that, that have this problem of like intimidating men. They feel like they're yeah. strong women and all that. And, and, you know, one of the things that I tend to say is that a lot of times it's not actually because you're strong and independent. It's because you're just taking on that masculine role. And one of the things that I've experienced just from like the change in, in, in something that a woman wears, the change in, in the way that she kind of presents herself and, and bringing out that feminine side of her, it's to a man, it's, it's literally like magic. I mean, it, it's like the woman just, you know, it, it's like she poofs with, you know, like fairy dust and she just, you know, turns into this magical, beautiful creature that, that, that guys are just like, what am I looking at right now? This is amazing. You know? And, and it's, uh, it, it's just, it's a beautiful sight to behold. And there's nothing that, you know, if, if you're looking to attract a masculine man, you know, get into your femininity, you know, wear something that, that, that makes you feel feminine, that, that gives you that flow. And, uh, and it's, it's really, really powerful stuff. So can I say something about that? Yeah, okay. go ahead. I, I, didn't, I, I just want to, because this is something that I hear a lot of women say, especially if they don't feel confident in their body or if they feel like, you know, they don't have the body type to wear dresses. I want to say that I find dresses in every body type, every size that, that works for you. So there is something for everybody. But the other thing is, is a lot of women don't feel comfortable getting the attention. And so like when you were talking about if you want to have that effect on guys, in theory, that sounds great, but uh, to some women, it's, it's pretty scary. Um, and and that, that goes more like into some deeper work uh, about, you know, what about having attention is scary for you. Um, but to those women out there who do feel that way, I always say take baby steps. You know, maybe it's just one thing you want to try. So if, if the dress is too scary, maybe just start with a pair of heels with, with pants that you feel like jeans and a nice shirt. Um, maybe play with doing something with your hair that's a little more feminine and flowy, you know, and it kind of snowballs. And after you get used to it, kind of like a costume almost, you, you really start embodying it. And then again, like what happened to me when I first got back out there, I got reinforced, you know, guys started commenting on the way I looked and it, my confidence grew and that attention seeking thing that was so scary to me, became, I, I started to embrace it. So... <clears throat> Do you, do you have anything that for like younger or older women, do you like, is there something that maybe an older woman should wear or shouldn't wear that a younger woman can or, or shouldn't? Do you have anything like that? Yeah, that's a really good question because I get that a lot. And I work with people in their twenties all the way up to, I, I've worked with pe women in their eighties. And I think the rule of thumb is looking at just what is um, age appropriate and feeling good for you and looking at your body type because there are some clothes that could look just amazing on both, you know, the 30 year old and the 50 year old. If they have the body to wear it and the confidence, then more power to them. I think what's inappropriate is like, you know, if you have an older lady who maybe is dressing like Britney Spears or something like that, I mean, something outrageous that 
the, the key is it's, it's not about, um, oh, I don't want to be like not looking young. Like being youthful is a good thing. Everybody, both men and women, when I dress them, I always try to dress them in a way that exudes like a youthful type of look. And, and that is never inappropriate. What's inappropriate is when something, and usually people feel it where things are hanging out and or showcasing parts of their body they, they don't like. And here's the other thing. Um, I, I would say, and Matthew, you can kind of correct me if I'm wrong, but men don't like you hanging out with everything, right? It's like having a little bit of mystery about you is a good thing. So. For instance, if you had a dress that covered you up all the way to the neck and then you turn around and you have just a little bit of a dip in the back, like that is sexier. So, you know, don't feel like in order to be sexy to attract a man that you have to show a lot of skin or show your boobs hanging out or, you know, it really is about balance and subtlety. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're totally right on that, you know, and, and I <laughs> I mean, this, this, this might sound a little strange, but but, you know, men have, uh, a lot of men have kind of this almost like explorer kind of mindset going on, you know, in the background of, of, of everything that they do. And, and so, you know, a woman to, to a lot of men is this mystery, you know, and that's part of, that's part of what the whole excitement is. That's part of what uh, the, the, the whole kind of interaction, the whole courtship, that's, that's what a lot of it's about is, is just, you know, finding out what, what mystery is there and, and exploring and discovering and finding out more about you. And, and so I, I, yeah, I mean, I totally agree. And, and, you know, if you're, if you're showing up and you've just got, you know, like, things going on that that are just you know showing everything you you might be sending him the wrong message too you know if you're looking for something long term you know and you show up wearing you know a, a bikini you know and and it's you know you're at a restaurant he he might you know think something a little bit different than what you're attempting to to put across and and the other thing that I wanted to mention just hit on real quick is is that whole idea of youthfulness that you're talking about mm. and you know I have literally seen I've done workshops and I've had women come into these workshops and they they looked you know just years older than they were and by the time they left you know they they we we'd gone through all these different like uh, these these different exercises and things to kind of break them through some of some of their blocks and some of the things that they had and their energy about them had become a lot more playful a lot more youthful and and the difference in the way that they looked literally sometimes would shed like ten years off of just the, their presence the way that they 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 held themselves and and how they came across and and. Um, you know, having that is, is so powerful. You know, I've met women that were, that were much, much older than, than I thought they were, you know, just because of the way that they presented themselves. And, and, and one of the things that I like to tell women is that, you know, a lot of times it's not, you know, cause a lot of women are like, you know, guys just want the, you know, 18 year old bimbo, you know, and it's like, no guys want youthfulness. You know, they want a woman that, that, you know, doesn't think that she's a hundred years old, you know, that doesn't live like she's a hundred years old. You know, she wants that he wants someone who, who has life about her, you know, and is living her life and is, is in that state of enjoying, you know, everything that, that life is about. And that's, and that's youthfulness. That's what youthfulness, that's, uh, you know, if it, th there's a lot of quotes and different stuff about it, but, but that's, that's what youthfulness is. It's, it's, it's living, it's being alive, it's being playful, it's being, you know, all those different things. And that is extremely attractive to men. I love that. Yeah. I mean, it's an, it's an energy, right? And it's, um, you know, a lot of times, and I don't know, we can talk about this later, but when I teach women how to flirt, women get kind of clammed up you know, they hear, they hear the word flirting and they're like, Oh, you know, they get the knot in the stomach and you know, they think that they have to be Marilyn Monroe and twirl their hair and all that. Although that does work for some women, it doesn't work for everybody and it's not comfortable. But for me, it's what you just said. It's about being um, playful. It's flirting with life really. And that is so attractive. And when women 
you know, get kind of sh gun shy about that and like, oh, I can't, I can't be like that. I'm such and such age. But then I'll ask them, well, okay, so what kind of guy are you attracted to? Well, I don't want some old guy. It's like, okay, well, there you go. What you want in a guy, guys want in you as well. So again, it goes back to what we were saying in the beginning, like attracts like. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and just kind of going off that, you know, what you just said there is, is, you know, I've, I've, looked at a lot of different studies from uh, people that, that have been in marriages for just decades and, you know, they're, they're like these older couples and stuff. And, and when you see them interact with each other, it's all, you know, whenever somebody's stayed together for that long, it's, you, there's always something that's going on. And, and usually part of what that is, is they're still like flirting with each other. You know, they still play with each other. They still tease each other, you know, and, and it's, and it's part of that, that, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't matter how old you are, you know, that stuff is still attractive. And, and it's, it's something that, that is a great thing to do no matter what stage you are in a relationship. So um, just uh, another thing that I, I wanted to kind of touch on here is, is so <clears throat> What about women who are really self-conscious? And I know you were talking a little bit ago about, you know, like just taking baby steps and, and, you know, wearing something a little bit more feminine and all that kind of stuff. What about women who are, you know, self-conscious about, you know, their weight, for instance? You know, do you have any tips for, you know, how a woman like that can, can kind of, you know, what she should do or how she should kind of uh, feel more confident about, about wearing something? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I, I have a lot of women who are in the sizes 10 and up and I, there's definite themes when they come to shop with me. First of all, they're very self-conscious and, and they feel like they can't wear certain things and they're also kind of stuck in a rut with the clothes that they already have. Um, I would say, you know, the first thing is, is, really taking a look in the mirror and instead of focusing on what you don't have or what you wish you had, it goes back to looking at you at what you do have and what you want to show off. Um, it, it is about body confidence and ladies, seriously, and Matthew, you can back me up on this. Men, there are different types of women for every man and different men like different things. And you know, it's, it can be very sexy for a man if you really enjoy your body, no matter what size you are. So I just, I really want to hit on that because I think a lot of times, especially in society and media, we see all these stick figures and photoshops, by the way, do a lot that's not even real. And so women are comparing themselves more and more than ever before because of technology. It's, it's so rapid in our, in our face and in our mind. Um, so, for for any woman who is, I'd say, size 10 and up, first of all, don't get frustrated in the stores because most stuff actually is found online in that size. Now, there are stores that I shop with clients here in Los Angeles um, that have quite a good selection and it's a great place to start. The cool thing is, is once you know the brand that fits you, you can order stuff online very easily and it becomes a lot less frustrating. So a, a lot of it's education and and the other thing is trial and error. Don't be scared about trying things that maybe you think don't look good on you. I have a, a quick story around that. So I was shopping with a, a woman and she you know, was overweight in her mind. She wanted to lose about 20, 30 pounds. And she was wearing clothes that were literally two sizes too big. Why? Because she didn't like the clothes clinging to her. She felt like she didn't, she was trying to conceal a lot of the stuff. So especially her pants, her, she was wearing really wide pants um, to try to hide her legs. Well, I invited her to try on a pair of hot pants, meaning like the skinny pants that actually hugged her legs and showed her legs off. Now she was on the shorter side. So she actually needed a thinner pant to elongate her body to, for her to appear taller and also thinner. But in her mind, she was like, no way, Kim, I can never wear that. So I'm like, look, we're just experimenting today. And the beauty of today is you don't have to buy anything. You're just playing. So we went into the room and she put on the hot pants. We got a really cool top. We put on a pair of heels, put on earrings. And she looked in the mirror and she burst into tears. And I said, what's going on? And she said, that's not me. Like that, that mirror is rigged. I said, no, honey, that, that is you. You just never have seen you. 
And it was just such a powerful moment for her to see herself in something she never imagined she could wear. And now she wears all clothes that fit her body because ladies, I, I want you to really like, I, I can't stress enough. The more form fitting, and, and again, it has to do with uh, the fabric too, because I know that there's some fabrics that cling to you not in, in not so flattering ways. But if you get the right fabric, the right fit, and it's something that actually hugs your body in a way where you can be seen, it's much more flattering and you'll be much more body confident in the end. Yeah, that that was really, really powerful. And I'm glad you shared that. And and I definitely agree with you on, on the whole point of, you know, men being into different things, you know, and, and there's so there's so much confusion out there, you know, like, women, I, I think, kind of, pull and pick different pieces from from different you know like different things that they hear and they kind of like mash it all together into this like collage of something that doesn't exist you know and and because i mean there's guys out there who are more into you know your breast size and there's guys that are more into your butt and there's guys that are you know into thinner women there's guys that are into bigger women And, and what a lot of women tend to do is they just pick and choose from from a couple of things that they heard and they're like oh well I need to have this size butt and I got to be this small but I got to have these boobs and and you know and and it really just confuses I think it's really just confusing for everybody and um you know just kind of going off that point I have a uh, I had a friend that I, I used to uh when I lived in Arizona I used to go out with him and you know we'd go out and meet girls all the time and and it was funny because he liked women that were big you know he liked big women you know and and it was always it was always so funny because he he would like make fun of me you know because he thought that the women that I dated were too small you know and and it, and it was just it was it was just like complete comedy every time we were out because he'd like you know like throw out these little jokes about some girl that I was talking to, you know, and how she needs to eat a hamburger or something like that. And, and, and it was always just, um, you, you know, and it really, it's true. You know, there's, there's just different guys that like different types of women and I have seen everything, you know, I've seen, um, you know, women that are very, very large, you know, get guys. And I've seen women who are very, very thin have the biggest problems in the world attracting men. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I totally, I totally agree about that. There, it was funny. I was coaching a guy one day and I was trying to figure out like who he thought was sexy. And you know, there's another difference here. There's a difference between a woman who is sexy and a woman who is just pretty or attractive. And so he was showing me all these different women. And so one woman went by and she was a stick figure, you know, blonde, but she was walking really stiff and she looked almost uncomfortable. Right. So she, she walked by and I said, you know, do you find her sexy? And he's like, well, I mean, she's pretty, but no, she's not that sexy. Not, not at all. I'm like, okay. About 30 seconds later, a woman, she was shorter, but a little more heavier set, but boy, was she working it. (laughs) I mean, she was, you know, she was moving and she made eye contact and she smiled. And I said, so you find her sexy? He's like, yeah. (laughs) And it was like, it was a totally different kind of body type. But the difference was, is that she was body confident in that moment and the other one clearly was not so ladies that's the biggest takeaway is really just love your body for where it's at right now embrace it well and and another thing i just want to kind of go off on right there is is there's there's this um so when you go and you're in a conversation with a man and you're talking to him um you know he might have a completely different impression. In fact, he probably does have a completely different impression than whatever it is that you think he's thinking right then. And, and if you start coming out with all these kind of things where you think there's something wrong with you and you think there's something wrong with your body and you're afraid of showing all these different aspects of yourself and you're being really insecure, he's going to start thinking in his mind, there's something wrong here. Like what's going on? What, what should, what am I missing? You know, what, what it's, what, what am I not seeing that I should be seeing, you know? And, and it's, it's really, really powerful, you know, coming across as confident, you know, for, for a man, because he might not, you know, you have all these ideas about what men like, but that's not what men actually like, you know, that, those are just your ideas about what men like, you know? And so th- this guy that's talking to you, you know, and, and, uh, one of the things I, I talk about in, in, uh, 
one of my programs is, is, you know, always assuming that a guy's attracted to you. You know, if he's sitting there talking to you, if he came up to you and approached you, if he's, you know, in a conversation with you, he's, he's probably attracted to you, unless it's for like something like business or work or something like that. You know, he's probably talking to you because he's attracted to you, you know, and, and so, you know, step into that, step into that space, step into that confidence, be that, be that beautiful, amazing woman that he wants you to be. You know, he wants you to, to, to be radiant and flowing and, and, you know, and secure in yourself because that's the kind of woman that he wants to have in his life. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, let, let's talk about first impressions real quick. So is what, uh, and we all know how important first impressions are because everybody, everybody always talks about it. You know, <laughs> you, you, know you, you never have a second chance to make a first impression. And so do you think there's anything specific that a woman should do if, if she wants to make a great first impression with a man? Yeah, well, you know, it only takes 30 seconds to make a first impression. That's what the research says. I think it's actually less. But what happens in the brain, there's people are making judgments and assumptions on two things and two things only. The attire that you have on and the attitude that you have. That's it. It's not even what you're saying that's as important in that first impression stage than showing up in the best way possible. So that right there is pretty powerful. It's not to say, oh my gosh, we're so superficial and depressive. It's actually, it should be exciting because there's a lot of things you can do instantly just to, to change up that first impression and really go in with that confidence. Um, you know, I it doesn't take like a genius to know that it, men are attracted to happy, fun, warm women and people in general are attracted. So any attitude that you have that's coming from work or, you know, negativity that happened that day, make sure that you give yourself enough time in between like your work mode or the stress of your day to the date. I don't care. Even if you're having a great day at work, you're still in that masculine energy because usually when you're in your work mode, you're in that masculine. So I always tell women, make sure you have scheduled date, at least an hour cushion in between. If not, if, if all possible, not even the same day at work. You know, I love doing weekend or other times that you can really kind of create that sexy space to go in. Um, the other thing is, is really pay attention and be mindful of what you're putting on. Like, I, I, there was this woman who had a date that I was coaching her on, and we got all these amazing outfits. And she just, she kind of just forgot, you know, she just went right from work and she had, she was a lawyer. So she went with her blazer and her big pants, all the old clothes that she had. I like, I was going to kill her. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, you know what? I just didn't even think about it. So start thinking about it. Also think about everywhere and anywhere is a chance to meet men. So it could be the grocery store. It could be the coffee bean. The more you start paying attention to what you put on your body and how that shows up for you, that's going to transcend even in the dates that you have, you know, cause you're going to have that energy about you all day long. Um, and you know, the other thing is avoid the Q and a sessions, <laughs> the interview session, Go in being playful. And one of the things that I teach a lot of people to do are telling stories. You know, like actually Matthew and I are telling a lot of stories right now. It's more interesting. It's fun. We can also, when Matthew tells a story, it makes me want to tell a story. And, and that's more fun. Um, so anything that you can do for yourself where you're going to actually have a more playful mindset, so be it. So if that means dance around, you know, crank the music, drink champagne right before the date, that is going to carry through. Yeah, awesome. And, and you know, just kind of going off of uh, what you were saying before about the whole, like, you know, doing something different um, you, or not, not, you know, having work the same day and, and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've also found that that's, that's really, really um, kind of a key thing because because a lot of times uh, – women will get into like just, you know, super masculine mode. And, and, um, you know, do you have any specific like things that a woman could do to like step into her femininity? If she, if she has to go on that date, you know, that, that same day and, and she's, you know, just coming from work and she's not feeling sexy and she's just, you know, feeling she's all in her head and stuff. Do you have anything that she can do to kind of switch modes and, and kind of step into her her you know magnetic feminine part of herself 
Yeah, I mean, the easiest is, is definitely the outfit. It's the, you know, just have some prep time in the morning or the night before to really think about it. Um, if you have to wear, say, like, you know, a corporate type of outfit for work, um, you know, you could have like a lacy cami underneath and change out your shoes so that you kind of make yourself a little more feminine. And then once you step into that kind of those, the feminine costume, you're, you'll start acting that way. There, there's no, it was funny because I, another story, of course I talk in stories, sorry. Um, I, I was giving a, um, I was a keynote speaker and I was talking to the ladies about first impression, actually what we're talking about right now. And I went up and wore my old mommy clothes, okay? And then underneath, I had my dress on and heels, and as I was talking, I was stripping, and I got into my my, feminine, my new self. But boy, I gotta tell you, when I had my old clothes on and I was like walking through the hotel, like guys didn't hold doors for me, I felt invisible, I started, I because I had my Birkenstocks on, I was like, I, I was walking so like sluggish and not sexy at all. And the minute I like, I transformed, I, it was like, it was jolting. Cause I, then I got into even my, my, my new me, but I did remember that old me long ago. So, um, it's very powerful. The, the other thing I would say is, um, if at all possible, really try not to meet at the same place or nearby where you know, you're working, even if it's a location that, that gives you a time to like walk a couple blocks. If you like live in a big city where you're walking or some space and time in your car, because then you can crank the music, you can just shake things up. And then the third thing is don't talk about work. Whatever you do, do not talk about your day. Don't talk about work. It, immediately sets you into that masculine kind of energy. I was coaching a woman and she's like this um, high executive at a very well-known company and I gave her the assignment the whole weekend that she could not once talk about what she did for a living and she was horrified in the beginning but then she realized oh my gosh you mean I I am so much more than just my work I think these days because women are getting so powerful in the workforce we're actually identifying ourselves of what we do for a living rather than just who we are and getting to know the guy across from us yeah, that's that's excellent advice. So you said that you have a free gift for us. What what's that all about? Yeah, so I do. I it's a free gift. It's um a free body type booklet. And as I was talking about before, half the battle is knowing your body type. There are five body types, and my guide actually teaches you how to measure yourself. And I want to clarify, it has nothing to do with weight distribution. It has to do with your bone structure. So you measure your shoulders, your waist, and your hips, and that'll determine what body type you are. And then also, I kind of give you tips on what to avoid wearing and what to wear to put on your body once you know the body type. So make sure you download it. Um, and then also I am offering a discount on my virtual makeovers if you do that as well that I talked about earlier. Awesome. And, and if you want to take advantage of that free gift, there's a button below this video right here and you will, <laughs> and, you, and you can just go down there and click on it and, and you'll go and get all the information. So um, thank you so much, Kimberly, for being here. This has been an excellent interview. You have some just awesome information. And it, was, it was a total privilege to have you on, on our interview today. And, and so uh, again, it's uh, Kimberly Seltzer from EliteImageMakeovers.com. So thank you so much for being here today. Oh my gosh, thank you for having me. It was awesome, it was fun. Awesome. And, and for everybody that's watching, um, you know, I will speak with you again soon.